What's up, Tribe TV? Welcome back. It's Diego from Not Let Me Stop. This time we got a new series, Film Reviews. We're starting with Mandalorian Season 2, Episode 1. So if you haven't, recommend go watch that real quick and then click back. So you can interact with us in the comments. Make sure we don't spoil anything for you guys if you like this stuff. So leave a like, comment, subscribe if you haven't, share with a friend. Hamburbox giveaways at 100 subs. We're almost there. So appreciate it. Video's about to start right now. I've been right into a Mandalorian season two, episode one, of Marshall. Oof, I've been waiting for it. You've been waiting. How for long? It. How long has it been since the end of it? Has it been a couple of months or has it's it been, been about a year? year? It's been about a year, right? It came yeah. out last October, so that so. Was... Yeah, so it it had to have ended at the end of November, probably December. So yeah. How been? A... Oh, you know what? It ended last December, right before the rise of Skywalker. Boom. Boom. All right. Anyways, back to the point intro very very capturing right very like it just grabs your attention real quick i feel like i thought it was a great way to start yeah i thought it was going to be slow coming and i was like ah uh, you know what where are we gonna where are we gonna pick yeah. up you know what i mean no i thought i thought it was a great way for the like i think they were like we have to give it like grabbing for the people that have been waiting for it mm -hmm. so it was like because then if you, if they would have started the first episode off like slow, slow, it would have been I don't like, think, fuck, why I don't, did I come back? Yeah, I don't think people would have came to watch episode two next week. Yeah, exactly. So it's like, I think they, they started out really good. They had that scene, I guess, in the trailer. And I thought that would have been like a later in the line. Like, yeah, they usually scene. put like a trailer, like middle episode. Yeah, like middle. Like a middle of the first episode. Yeah, you know, like some shit like that. But that was crazy. It was cool. Um. I mean, I think the trailer just kind of... Sh I mean, not the trailer. The intro kind of just showed you how valuable the armor is and how desirable it is right now Yeah. in the current time of the galaxy. And you see Mando sort of set his objective, right? He wants to find another Mandalorian so he can try to get his... It was goal of trying to find... Yoda species, right? Yeah, they're their planet or find the rest of his family. Something. If, yeah. Literally anything. Any, anything that's like him. Yeah, literally. So, I thought that was a great way to just get right back into the series. Yeah. And then hopping right back into it, they send him to Tatooine looking for a Mandalorian. Now, immediately as a Star Wars fan watching this, Mandalorian Tatooine only puts one name in mind and that name is Boba Fett. If you guys can't see that click on my thing real quick. Oh I got you. All right. Boba Fett is definitely the uh the name that you're looking for here, right? So you're thinking about it and you're like holy shit he's going straight after Boba Fett and we get to we get to Tatooine and we get back with the hanger right, yeah, the right hanger. back to the hanger the the motherly hang, hanger lady with who the, sort of whips him into shape yeah right with the little three droids the little three stooges if you will which i thought was great because you get to see the what's it called the droid arc kind of like right come full circle here cuz cuz at first they ran up to his like he shoots at one of the droids back in episode five of season one yeah so right now like when the start when they run up to him and then she's like get away you know he doesn't like droids and he's like no you could let him i guess it needs some cleaning anyway or whatever he says yeah he said something like a rundown and then, and then she gave like a look or it was like i guess i guess now he like has a liking for them or has like doesn't have his problem anymore you know so. yeah i thought it was great i thought it was cool but um I'm glad they didn't make her like a like a focal point like they did in the Gunslinger episode. Yeah. Where it was like, here, watch the kid. Yeah. He knows now. Like. But it was cool how she gave the info. Like, she was oh, just yeah. like... Um, she was talking she was about like, trying to buy him. She was just like, offspring. well, it's, it's around this area. It got wiped out. Oh, she de yeah, she had the map. With the amp, like, that with was the... really cool how she had the map, though, on the, R uh, like the R5 or R2 unit, whatever it was. Um, like pre-war, like yeah. they had, she had like the errors of maps. That was. Pretty Is cool. it just me being a non-Star Wars fan, or was that the first time where somebody in the show like actually said like where 
like like what era they were in because she said like oh like after this happened like there hasn't been any because she said after the fall of the empire yeah um grief says in season one when he after he brings him that first bounty like the, the episode one intro after the intro then you get into the cantina and you meet grief for the first time and he's trying to give him imperial credits okay he references that like the empire is over like, okay so they do it twice in the intros that's good then yeah never mind i just didn't catch on the first time word yeah yeah, yeah. no you could no word. but yeah so they, they do it they do give you the sort of like the timeline twice if you don't I yeah, guess if you so decided it's like, to watch season two first, like, I don't know. For some people that do that, I don't know, I don't yeah, know I don't anybody know. that does that, but you know where <laughs> it is. If you watch the first episode of any show, you'll know where on the timeline it is in the universe. So. Definitely, definitely. Um, Then we see him travel to, she sends him to, I forgot the name of the town, but she sends him to this mining colony that's yeah, damn near non-existent on the map. She says it's there, or it was there. It was there. But it's not on any of the new maps. Right. Or it wasn't really even on that map. It wasn't even on the old map that she had. It was just like a little dust cloud. Yeah. So shows shows what was um sort of like the I guess like the state the status of the town. Yeah. Like the name, you know, it's not really known. Like Moss Eisley, if you're a Star Wars fan, you know that name. You know I that don't name. Know. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Uh but anyways, Sorry, I picked up on the way out. while he was traveling, though. He stopped. I guess it took him a night to travel. Yeah. To the town he was going to was he stopped with the Tuscans, and he's like good with the Tuscans. Yeah, and you see in the first season how he was like communicating. Well, on I think it was episode five. Yeah. And the the guy that he was on the mission with, he was like, "Well, what are you doing?" He's like, "I'm negotiating." He was just like he just wanted to know what he was doing because he had no idea that he could speak multiple languages or that he understood other creatures. So it was uh, they tied that full back the whole time in this episode, which I respect for them doing because they brought back a lot of season one shit without throwing it too much in your face. World building was great. Yeah, world building was great. They they tied the series back, not just oh shit, because <laughs> not just Star Wars. Because it was like. Because it was like, at the end of season one, you saw that he gained his respect for the droids. And then immediately in season two, you see that. And then you see his communication with the Tusken Raiders mid-season. And then right away in season two, you see him needing their help to get to whatever his next step is. Because he has to do get to this place, but he has to stop because you can't travel overnight. You need sleep, you need food, you need water. Too. Yeah, you're in a desert. A Tucson desert. So, <laughs> Tatooine has two suns. So, moving along the story. Now, we get to, I guess, the first story point, right? Which is like meeting the marshal. Yeah. Now, how do you how do you think this scene was like? Like, what would you give this scene a rating? I thought it was, I thought this scene was put together like top yeah. five. Top uh, five. I thought it was really good because they gave it that western feel. Yeah, it gave you like a it gave you like a mob movie type vibe. That too. So it was like you're walking in and you see a guy and he's in his little suit and you're like, "Oh shit, that's the boss." But it's a different like type vibe, so it's just like, "Oh, you know immediately obviously the camera goes to him, but the way he's dressed, the way he looks, you're like, "Oh shit, we're about to go have an interaction with this guy." And we get to see the crumbled leftover armor of Boba Fett yeah. being worn by a non-Mandalorian, which, I mean, Boba Fett is technically a non-Mandalorian too. We're not going to get into that in this video. Leave that to, like, a Star Wars Sometimes. channel. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, but I thought this was cool because... As a Star Wars fan, I didn't really want to see Boba Fett right away. Yeah. If if he's going to come back, you know, at all. Um, but I definitely did not want to see him like, oh, wow. First fucking 10 minutes. Hey, you're back. Great. Okay. That's like ultimate fan service bullshit, right? Right. Um, But I do like the fact that someone has his armor and Mando is treating it like it's like... 
like sacred yeah. honor, you know what i mean i i, I kind of like that idea it's it's kind of like a medieval sort of like bro that was like a medieval knight like you can't yeah. have his army you can't just be fucking around with that yeah and then it was like the way that like the conversation he's like he goes he was like i thought that only one of us was gonna walk out but then i saw the kid and then you might have different intentions. And then he yeah. like started to like read his body language and shit. <laughs> and then he was like, huh, I don't know what's going on here. Facts. And then every, the town starts shaking. Yeah. And we get to meet the, uh, I'm going to fuck this up. Is it, are they antagonists, the villains? Protagonists? Anyway, we meet the villain of the ca- of the damn uh, episode. I was trying to sound all English classy, but I don't have that vocab. Anyways, Side. we mean I think they were calling it the Great Dragon or like the Sand Dragon. It Some... was pretty similar to that thing in Legend of Korra, if you saw it. If anybody of you watched that, I um, hope you I, have. Very popular show, show, show. Avatar. But uh, yeah, we meet that. We see him take out a bantha, a bunch of shit in the town gets knocked down, and uh, that whole like main like avenue, I guess, is yeah. just like or like their main street sand, and he's just takes up all of it so you can yeah. see like really how big this alaskan bullworm type creature is that shit was crazy it was a it was a weird th- i at first i thought it was a sarlacc which um they refer to but it wasn't anyways and then so after we meet that they strike a deal on if he helps take them out take that out he gets the mandalorian armor back he gets boba fett's armor so, they go to meet with the Tuscans. Yeah. And on the way, we actually learn how Cobb gets the armor, which I thought was a great story. Yeah, it was. I, I thought it was cool how they show because they show how Mando got his stuff. So they wanted to show like, hey, this guy wasn't like the original thing, but look, this is how he got it. He did it to survive the same way Mando did. Fact. So it was like. They try to, like, give that so people, like, the fans could respect him for wearing it. So it wasn't like, oh, I'm just wearing it because I wanted to wear it. It looked cool. He was like, no, like, I needed it to basically to survive. Yeah, I love how um they didn't just have him, like, go into the desert and find it in, like, a Sarlacc pit that Boba Fett got swallowed in or some shit. Right. Uh, the Jawas find it, which... I mean, they've been planted throughout the entire series. You know, yeah, you see, see them, them in the, the second time. episode of the damn series. You see them fucking around with everything. Even when what's his name crashes, uh, Moff Gideon, Gus Fring. Yeah. <laughs> Let me stop. Um, he crashes. They're there, right? And he then he starts coming out. But, um, uh, what was I saying? Oh yeah, I love how they didn't just. You know, just oh yeah, he he walked across it. Nah, he stole from those mining yeah. colonists that were taken over. Which, by the way, the you were talking about the timing of the series, and that really shows you like the timing. Because if you were to watch like episode six now, you'd see the Death Star get blown up. You'd be like, oh, like this is shortly after. Oh. Which I thought was a great little like interlude. That's why I really liked how they t- showed you how he got the armor. And how they presented the scene when you first meet the marshal, and he's just like, "Bought off some Jawas." Like he, they just give it to you flat. Because when I yeah. first watched it, I was like, "That's it." And that's, he's just gonna have a drink with him. We're just gonna have a drink with this dude, and then like you get into the episode, and you're like, "Oh, okay, I can appreciate it." Yeah. And then on the second time, I was like, "This is genius!" Like it was so genius. Um. Right. Now we see Mando run into well before we meet the Tuscans. I kind of spoiled it, but. I assume if you're watching this, you already watched the uh, episode. When they go to meet the Tuscans, they run into the, like, wolf-type, the sand wolf-type, I don't know, species. I don't even know what to call them. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like, the spikes on them. Yeah, they're almost like a dinosaur. Um, they're, 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 they're pretty bugging, but I would say that was pretty dope seeing Mando use his little voice changer to be able to like actually communicate with them. Yeah, I I didn't know what he was doing, and then he, yeah, he just that. yells at them. Just and like, then he goes oh, up to him and he's chilling. Yeah, that was really dope. Sick. And then the Tuscans walk out. That was yeah, that was really cool, really well put together scene. And then he was like, "You want to tell me what's going on, partner?" <laughs> uh, by the way, I love the fact that they got like a country guy. Yeah, to do it. Cool. 
because they it gave it that like western vibe which i mean this series has really like kind of i guess been like a vibe too but uh yeah that really set the tone i guess because you can't do that with mando you know, you can't just give him a fucking... You can't change him his voice. You can't just... It, but you can't even give somebody like that, like, a, like a too much of an accent. Like, Pedro Pascal's lines are so just, like... Yeah. They're, you know, basic... Quick punch, you like... Know, basic yeah. dude lines. I don't know. Like basic male lines. Yeah. I don't even know. Um, We do see the tension between the humans and the Tuscans. Yes. Which, I think this is perfect timing for, like, an episode like this to come out. Should have came out a little... I guess it did come out a little earlier, but, like, I mean, saying, saying it should have came out a few months earlier. <laughs> Could have got some votes going. Come on. Uh, but it, I, I think this is great because it's, like, it's it's trying to show you to bring people together. These are two different people of two different lifestyles, what they're trying right. to show you. The humans... You know, they live organized in these houses and these villages, whereas the Tuscans are nomadic tribes people. They're yeah. they're classic people. Yeah. You know? So I thought that was really dope. Yeah. And I Because I, Mando really does like become the divide and he's like just bridge. like, yo, you gotta like fucking work together to accomplish this goal that you both want. So you can't kill each other first or else you won't finish what you're trying to do. Exactly, exactly. I thought it was a great um so like I I love how Favreau doesn't just put one story, sort of in front of you. He gives you like, here's the kid and Mando storyline. In the same episode, we're gonna give you these two. Like he plays you storylines based on like, either a group of characters at a time or two characters at a time. And yeah. It, like, bounces on relationships. Yeah. Or it's like a lot of times it's based on group versus group. I was about to say it. Sometimes it might be like, uh. It gives, like, multiple stories on, like, the good or the bad side. So it was, like, you saw a lot of the Marshal and his, like, how they, like, presented him as bad at first. But then they showed you a lot more and then you were, like, oh, shit, maybe he's the good guy. And then, like, you saw, like, with the, um, like, with the Tuscans, like, they had problems with Marshall. And then, like, Mando was, like, yo, you guys have to agree to this, too. Like, it's not only him that's the problem. So you guys have to be cool. Try not to hurt him, even though you don't like him. So it was like... Yeah, definitely. Definitely what, like, what you were saying. Perfect. That's right on. I thought they did it perfectly. And then then we get to them planning, which was I thought was hilarious. When yeah. the marshal's like, that's not to scale. And then they do the, <laughs> he does the little, like... And they're like, it's to scale. <laughs> he was just like, yeah, it is. And then... uh they add the like extra little beads, and yeah, he's they... like, "That's what I'm talking about." And then he was like, "Where are we getting these reinforcements?" And he was like, "I, I offered up your village." Yeah, <laughs> unreal. That was great. And then you really see him. He's like, "Shit, like we have, yeah, like we, we have to be, we have to this. give ours here. It's not just me now." Yeah. Which I will give the marshal credit. He has balls to just be like, "Hey, I want to be the one who just I'll, I'll put everything in for this town." You know what I mean? unreal like he he's got balls for that yeah he does use boba fett's armor real nice too i gotta give him that yeah it fits him definitely fits him definitely fits him but uh they plan to blow this damn thing up from the bottom and uh well that doesn't it doesn't work exactly it, it does kind of it works temporarily it knocks him out yeah it knocks him down and then i guess it just like didn't hit the inside because obviously he just blew up the bottom of him so it was like damaged he wasn't really yeah he was just a little bumper bu- a little wind bumper bump not the wind on him yeah right yeah a little fender bender <laughs> so it was just like and then he was just like shit that didn't work so then they were sitting around looking for another plan and then they see more explosives on what's this animal's name oh it's a bantha sure and then <laughs> <laughs> mendo tells uh this guy to like he was just like yo like oh Cobb, Cobb yeah he was just like yo like you gotta watch the kid bangs him out of the way because he unreal. didn't have enough time Un- he didn't unreal. have enough time to explain what was his plan like what he, what he was gonna do and then he his plan is to get swallowed like a crazy person I, I was watching it like oh fuck it's over it's over 
Mando is done. Fuck, they killed him first episode. <laughs> <laughs> this so sucks. <laughs> Mando be trying to die all the time since he took but his helmet off. You don't know how IG. quickly through my head that was processing. Like, the, the train of emotions in my head. It was like, he gets swallowed. I was like, fuck, they killed this guy first episode. And then a few seconds later, <laughs> you just see the ground moving. And then you see the ship pop open. And then Mando's flying out. I was like, oh, and he's God. I wouldn't... him with I his... Like, uh... Yeah, the, his, he has like the, the EMP thing yeah. on the side, on the end of his yeah, and I was cycler like, rifle. They wouldn't kill him first episode. I was just bugging. Shot. <laughs> I think I think there's like season three is confirmed, so I don't <laughs> I don't think they're killing him yet. <laughs> Let me stop. But uh, oh shit, that was funny. But yeah, he rises to the occasion, man. That was awesome. I I was really like puzzled the whole time though, like when when like the the last bullworm drone uh, like swallows him up there i was like okay he's about to jump out the way you know yeah blow him up from the inside that's a great plan great plan it's a great plan stick to the plan yeah i thought i thought he was about to use the jet pack and just pop up as soon as he was just like coming down but then he's just like ah i'm yeah. gonna go inside <laughs> yeah like what i was so confused but he got out of it i guess it was it was cool i guess i don't know it was all right i i, I thought that was that could have been better yeah it could have been better no I'll give it to him because it had us on the edge of our seats. Yeah, it was like, what the fuck? So I guess like, that's why they did it like that. Because then if, if oh, he stood outside, you know then he would have known. If he stood on outside, he'd be like, word, he's safe. Shit's dead. Now we were like, oh shit, they're both going to die. You know what it does, though? Because you know how he, the the thing we forgot to say was like shooting acid like out of its stomach. I guess it was yeah. stomach acid, I guess. Out of its mouth at like the uh, Tuskens and the humans. And yeah. It was literally like. It was disintegrating them like yeah. like Mando's gun, um, his cycler rifle, uh, and then fucking he withstands that. I guess the Beskar armor that is so valuable and so desirable can withstand so much shit. Yeah, that's, that's wild. Because, I want that shit. I mean, I'll I'll, I'll I'll get to that in a second. But then we we get to like the ending part. We see them harvesting this beast of an animal yeah which was kind of disturbing <laughs> yeah the rib cage was like i would say about like a good 10 feet over their head yeah good like two size like two sizes of this room that we're in like yeah. it was pretty bugging and then you just see this huge hunk of meat on the back of mando's uh, yeah. speeder bike and <laughs> baby yoda's fascinated he yeah. loves carnage yo he loves yeah, carnage. Yeah. This, this there crazy. is no shot this kid is a jedi all right let me tell you he's <laughs> choking bitches all right he's fucking just using the fire to push it back out of yeah him. this dude was fire bending he thought he bugging. was an avatar he's bugging no shot he's a jedi but he's a sick anyways <laughs> that's another video um for another channel he does complete the mission, so he does reclaim the armor. I thought the whole time he was going to be like, you can keep the armor, which I really thought would have been stupid and cheesy. Yeah, but... I'm glad he took it. Yeah. Cobb and him are on good terms, and I assume... I assume we'll see him again, again. later on. Yeah, that's what I was And I think Mando will give him different armor instead of giving him this armor. I think he'll give him some sort of, like replacement man that's what i'm saying like you'll give him like some like, semi mandalorian yeah it'd be like here yeah uh, it's not a full helmet or some shit you know what I mean? here's a jetpack <laughs> and here's the here's the chest you don't get a helmet or some shit that's you know what i mean you like, get you this, could be one of those mandalorians you get this you get the thing on the back you get a gun you don't get no helmet you're you take it off now you don't deserve see... it Fact. that's another thing that we could mention on like real quick like how as soon as like it starts and you see him like he immediately takes it off and then he was like well i've never met a real mandalorian so oh, yeah. it was like he was yeah, just letting it know and he was just like yo yeah I'm, I'm you know i'm real. not real i mean as soon as he took the helmet off it was for me it was like you're not like a man you're not part of the creed right yeah like you're not you're not there with it um which is interesting because in like uh, is it Attack of the Clones? Yeah, Attack of the Clones. Jango Fett, Boba Fett's father, has his helmet off, his whole suit off, while talking to Obi Wan Kenobi. Damn. So you can see that he's not a real Mandalorian. So obviously, you can see Boba Fett really isn't a real Mandalorian, but may actually adapt the ways more or something. Yeah. But we may see, like, something. 
maybe clash between those two because at the end, Ooh. after Mando speeds off, we see this disgruntled, like fucked up figure, right? Yeah, it looked like he almost had like burn. Now we are on Tatooine, like I said, the Mandalorian Tatooine thing automatically thinks Boba Fett. And here is what I just realized you think that's Boba while Fett? we were talking. Yes. Here's what I just realized. Hear me out, right? Boba Fett died getting swallowed by a Sarlacc, right? That beast that they were saying it used to inhabit that cave. It was an old Sarlacc pit, you know what I mean? You could eat the Sarlacc. So obviously, my theory is that Sarlacc pit is the Sarlacc pit from Return of the Jedi. Um that Boba Fett gets swallowed into. And since the Tuscans harvest the Sarlacc, right? They probably eat it because they're eating that. They harvest whatever lives in there. Um, They were able to help Boba Fett get out. And since he had the Beskar armor, he was able to withstand it. And you can see like the paint has like the kind of thing. You know what I mean? Because he had to have been in there for like, uh... about six years here, right? But now, here, stay with me, right? I'm here, nigga. Mando gets swallowed by the thing, right? Comes out immediately because he has the best scar on. So that would prove that you would be able to get... Survive. That. Survive like a stomach, like a digestion, almost. Yes. Therefore, planting Boba Fett there. And then, what is he after? Not the child. He wants his arm. arm. So, is he the villain of the season, or is he like a side villain who could become, I like don't a, like an enemy become friend type shit? Yeah, I was about to say I don't think he's really gonna be a villain for a full episode. He he'll be, probably be he like a be, villain. He might for, be a villain for like he'll uh, be tracking him for a while. Maybe there'll be an episode where it's like, this is it. This is it. Oh, he did something that kind of fucked up Mando's yeah. move, but they didn't really like cross paths it wasn't yeah. really right right and then it then we'll get to the episode and then be like here is your shit like i thought you were dead yeah facts i i think he'll give it to him me too but if he holds it to him that he's not a real mandalorian i don't think he will but if it's his right i see what you're saying it's his but you know <laughs> what i mean he had to have stolen it from a real mandalorian probably I don't know where Boba Fett got his armor. I will not. I'm not educated. Maybe I could dive into that. Let's look it up. I look that up. Look it up on the StarWars.com. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I think there is a Star Wars Wikipedia. It's like I think it's called Wikipedia. 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 Some shit like that. No clue. Just made it up, and I thought I was just making it up, but I guess it's real. I think I think that was a great episode, though, overall. I liked it, because I'm interested for episode two now. I'm ready for episode two. I love I love this series, man. I really do. I love how it has two, like, sides to it, where it's like, you are hooked. Like, like what what's what are you trying to figure out, right? Like, what, what from your I'm perspective? I'm just trying to see if we find this planet with more of these baby Yodas. Okay, that's, like, right. He's trying to figure out the baby Yoda storyline right because as i as, am because as somebody that never saw star wars jumping into mandalorian that's that's the goal so it's like that's my goal in my head because that's all i know oh, that's all i know right, so right. you could see everything else so i'm interested to see what you have that's to what say. i'm saying like watching as a like a star wars fan like you have to say the storylines are pretty simple right overall but it's really like the details they're there that the details and the relationships and like shit that goes on it's like this is what hooks you it's well thought out like everything is well, well placed together. in time and all that humor was good this time too it, yeah they, they definitely give you laughs in the show favreau's really good at replicating the star wars like template if you will where it's just like subtle like good humor whereas like the the sequel films eight uh, seven, eight, and nine. They gave you uh like Marvel like humor where it was like ah uh, it was 
if you're a kid, that was funny. Yeah, you know what I mean? Whereas like, it's like, old... everybody's kind of laughing at when yeah. like IG is, you know, I'm going to self-destruct. You know no, I mean? don't do that. Wait. No, stop. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> shit like that. Like, that, those are all, like, that gets me when I rewatch it. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, that is, that is what we're looking for in good film here. And I'd say Mandalorian is holding up. And as long as we're releasing episodes on this, it's holding up. <laughs> at least. Um, at least to our standard. I'm sure we'll run into some filler episodes in the series. Yeah. But even the filler episodes are fire because they had show audio. Yeah. <laughs> you guys will get that. You, you guys will get to that. We'll, we'll, you'll see that little season one review. We will have a season one review coming so you can get our thoughts on that. Uh, stay tuned for that. Uh, episode two is coming out in a few days. We're going to do that. Uh, check this. This will be coming out every Wednesday we're gonna try and do so yeah stay tuned stay safe balance prosper appreciate y'all peace out thank you for watching everybody be sure to leave a like comment tell us what you thought of mandalorian season two episode one subscribe we're doing a hamper box giveaway at 100 subs share this with a friend hit the notification bell so you get notified when we do new content click the flow page in the description below follow us on instagram Twitter and Twitch. We're doing some live streams over there soon. And stay safe, balanced, prosper. Peace out.